<clears throat> Lord, you have been faithful to us in these months throughout this year. And our hearts are filled with gratitude and thanksgiving. Lord, there are many times perhaps we feel like we have failed you. But we would pray that you would grant us mercy to be strong in the Lord and to stand fast and to stand in the gap where you have put us. Bless us tonight to be challenged and encouraged to serve you well and to live well for the gospel and for Jesus. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Tonight I'd like to take a verse from James chapter 1, the epistle of James in the New Testament. Chapter 1. I am certain that perhaps you know this verse very, very well. And that verse that I'd like to read and from which I'd like to preach is verse 12, James 1, 12, under the heading of endure well. Tonight, I want to talk to you about enduring well. Uh, James actually, uh, this isn't the first time in this chapter that he's talked about trials. Um, he starts out in verses 2, 3, and 4, saying, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet various trials or trials of various kinds uh, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and stead let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect complete lacking in nothing and so he's describing the process by which god matures and develops strengthens and and uses his people uh, through trials so he's already talked about that. And then he talks about some other important things. And when we get down to verse 12, he says the following. Blessed is the man. And yes, that word blessed is the same word Jesus used in the Beatitudes on the Sermon on the Mount. The word means happy in the Lord is someone who is this way. Notice how that's used in this verse blessed is the man who remains steadfast or endures under trial for when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life which the lord has promised to those who love him jb phillips renders this as follows the man who patiently endures temptations and trials that come to him is truly a happy man for once his testing is complete he will receive the crown of life which the lord has promised to all who love him the nasb translates this verse blessed is a man who perseveres under trial for once he has been approved <clears throat> he will receive the crown of life which the lord has promised to those who love him. Let me give you six textual observations. And then I want to apply <clears throat> this in our lives as we sort of end the year uh, on this Wednesday night uh, in prayer uh, under the heading of endure well. Number one observation is this. Trials come to God's people trials come to God's people. We are commanded to endure or persevere or hang in there when trials come, which means trials are going to come. I never understand anyone who says to me that they hold to a theology that if you're a Christian, if you're, if you're filled with the Spirit of God, and if you're walking with the Lord, you will never get sick. You will never have a problem. Nothing will ever turn out wrong. I just, that's not in the scripture. Rather, a text like this reminds us that trials even come to God's people. So it, it's not, you know, there's a whole book called the book of Job. Do you know what I'm talking about? There are those who think if you have a problem, or if something happens to you, you get sick, or you have a tragedy, you must have some sin in your life, right? You ever hear anybody think like that, talk like that? And yet here was Job who walked with God 
And God commended him to the devil. And yet Job went through these difficult experiences. Brothers and sisters, we became Christians not just because we were promised that we wouldn't have a problem, but because that's the only way to live, to know life in Jesus Christ. Observation two, trials require that we remain steadfast under them. Trials require that we remain steadfast under them. What is our goal, according to this passage of Scripture, when trials come? As God's people, our goal is, this may not, you may not like this, but I think it's true. Our goal should be to just hang in there. To not give up. I don't subscribe to this idea that uh, the victorious life in Jesus Christ means that, that you're up every day and, and life is glorious every day and you're just praising the Lord every day even when uh, someone um, hit your car and destroyed it. And usually I don't say praise the Lord when that happens. I mean, usually, it's, oh man, and then I start praying about it. Sometimes the best you can do is not give up. Well, that doesn't sound very spiritual. Oh, listen, friend. Sometimes that is very, very spiritual. This is a text on perseverance, steadfastness, endurance. Just hang in there. It doesn't mean you're not growing. It doesn't mean you're not winning. It means you are. Number three. Third observation from the text is that true and genuine faith is demonstrated by trials, not destroyed by them. True and genuine faith is demonstrated by trials, not destroyed by them. This person is someone who has faith in Christ, and because he has faith in Christ, that faith is active and operative when he walks through the trial. What keeps him afloat in an ocean of trouble? Faith. Faith in God. Faith believing all is well. Faith knowing that God is watching over me. Faith knowing I belong to the Lord and that God is going to cause all things to work together for, for good. It is that faith in God that began when you were saved that is operative all through your life. And that faith is a genuine faith that is proven by trial, not destroyed by it. I do not think the scripture believes and teaches that trials destroy faith, but faith is proven and purged by trial. Observation number four. Faith is also manifested by loving the Lord. I think it's an important point. Faith is also manifested by loving the Lord. And we endure trials because we love the Lord. Now, notice, for example, our text. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he'll receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to whom? To those who love him. Doesn't that remind you at the end of Romans 8, 28, God causes all things to work together for good to those who, who are called according to his purpose, to those who love him and are called according. So <clears throat> it's not that love is the action, but, but love is the appendage to faith. Faith creates love. So how does faith act in the Christian life as it is, it is energized in the Christian experience? It is, it is so that the love is created by God in our hearts. And because we love him, we hang in there for him. By the way, I think that love for him is fed by his love for us. So we could develop that a little further. I'm not going to do that tonight. But we understand John Re saying we love him because he what? First loved us. Lord, Romans 8, 35 to 39. Paul said, nothing will separate us from the love of God. So the love of God, as he would say in 2 Corinthians, constrains us to love him. And love enables us to endure. Number five. So faith and love go together. 
<clears throat> Number five, God gives the promise of life as a crown for those who believe on Christ and love him. The word crown here is a metaphor. It is a metaphor for, for the life we have that God gives to us. This is the promise that God gives to us. Hang in there. Stick with me. Walk with me. Don't give up. Trust in me. Depend on me. And at the end of that journey, you will know life that you will wear like a crown. Because that life is my gift and promise to you. I think this is eternal life. This is the life we have in, in Jesus Christ. And if we will hang in there with him and continue to love him and honor him and obey him, there is going to come a point when that life we have in Christ will explode with joy and we'll wear it like a crown and be grateful for it without regret. Sixth observation. Loving God and remaining steadfast go together in the Christian life. <laughs> when you really love, you hang in there. You stick together. Because that's what love does. Love never fails. Right? Okay. I think all of those observations are clear from this passage of Scripture. Now let me make about four applications of them. First of all, and I've already indicated this, um, I just want to re-hit it again. But God does not promise to Christians a life without trial. God does not promise Christians a life without trial. Don't ever feel when you get sick or when things go wrong or when life seems to crumble in that you are somehow a second-rate Christian or that God is suddenly mad at you or that God has changed his mind. <laughs> Uh, about you um, that's not what that means in fact everything that happens in your life and mine first comes through the hand of God so he allows it and in allowing it he is saying you need this you need to go through this because you will never be what I want you to be until you go through this so we receive it in the words of Paul in Ephesians giving thanks for all things First Thessalonians 5, we give thanks in the midst of all things because God is working in our lives, even in trials. So God doesn't promise to Christians a life without trial. Second, sometimes in trials, all the Christian can do is just hold on. Remaining steadfast, hanging in there is a victory. It is a victory. You may come out of it bloody, beaten up, mud and dirty everywhere but the fact that you've held on is a victory i will often counsel people who are going through grief uh be be patient with yourself don't expect yourself to be up all the time don't expect yourself to be on top all the time you're going to have days when everything is dark that's okay just keep going put your hand to the plow and just don't stop. I learned a lot in football. Boy, did I learn a lot in football years ago. One of which is you get knocked down a lot. But every time you get knocked down, you're supposed to get back up. Some of you play ball. Did you get knocked down? Maybe you played basketball and got knocked down. Or some other whatever it is. Tiddlywinks, I don't think you get knocked down very much, but you get up don't give in to the fact that you've had a rough day you know why i say that a lot because i have a tendency to give up number three the bible says that the trial in a christian's life becomes the context for god's promise fulfillment the bible says that the trial in the life of a christian in the christian's life becomes the context of God's promise fulfillment. Have you ever prayed a prayer like this? Dear Lord, give me your best. Have you ever prayed a prayer like this? I want to be in the center of your will. 
I want to know the very best you have for me. You may not have known it, but you were praying for trials. Because the only way to get to the best is to go through the trial. That is, that is part of the purging. That's part of the cleansing. That's part of the maturation and the development of your, of your steadfastness and character. It's called sanctification in this life. The life of the Christian becomes the context by which we experience the best God has for us. Don't give up. And number four, loving God shows up best in the Christian's life through endurance. How can you show God you love him? Well, simply put, it's doing what you're supposed to do no matter what comes. Uh, you just don't change. You if you, if you have a problem, you don't quit going to church. You don't quit reading your Bible. You don't quit praying. You keep doing what you're supposed to do in spite of what happens. And you know what you're doing? You're showing yourself. You're showing others that you love the Lord. As we look back on 2022, we might feel that we have failed to endure well at times this past year. Do any of you have that experience in your life? Can you look, look back to a time in this life, in this year, where you thought, mm, I wish I'd have done better there. Anybody? Am I the only one like that? Yeah. Perhaps we regret that we didn't hang in there better. Well, if the Lord wills, we're going to have another shot at it. It's not 2022, but it's a next year. We're going to start over. And I don't get these paper calendars. In it. Maybe I do. I know every once in a while I'll pick up one. But I used to love to get a fresh calendar. Nothing's written on it except what's printed on it. And, and it was just like I'm starting over. Didn't that feel good? Am I the only weird person here? It's just it's you're starting over. You get a new new shot at it. I would suggest that we make some commitments tonight. Let me suggest that we begin the new year with a proper biblical expectation of life and of God and of ourselves. Have a proper biblical expectation what do you expect of life next year what do you expect of god what do you expect of yourself expect god to be god he cannot be anything but god life is life you by the way you're living in a fallen sinful world did you know that next year is going to be sin garbage rottenness failure but god is with us you're going to be you you're not going to change overnight. God will not zap you. Sometimes I've felt like people have thought, if I can go to the altar and pray hard enough, maybe God will send lightning and change me. <laughs> You're going to be you. Don't expect different. Let us also seek next year never to give in to the desperation that leads to a possible, possibly giving up. Do you know what desperation feels like? Let's make a commitment now as we move into the next year to never give in to the desperation, <clears throat> the despair that leads to giving up. We are watching people give up daily. Stop it. You're going to make it. By the way, did you know you're not the first one to go through that? I'll never forget when my little buddy was born here. One of the first encouragements I had in my life. I'll be honest with you. I think I was depressed. And I didn't handle that as well as I should have. 
But one of the first encouraging thoughts came to me was, I'm not the first one to go through this. I won't be the last, and I'll make it just like they did. Isn't that a great thought? You're going to make it. The sky is not falling, Mrs. Chicken Little. You're going to make it. You're not the first one to go through this. God is with you. Don't give in to the desperation. Don't feed the negativity that will lead you to say, in some form or another, I quit. Don't you ever do that. And third, and this is my last point. Let us always, no matter what, seek to trust in the Lord. To depend on Him. And always try to honor Him in everything. That's our goal. Honor Him. Exalt Him. Extol Him. Proclaim Him. No matter what. I will say this and then I will lead us in prayer. It is one of my goals. One of my pastoral desires is to pray for my people. As we enter into a new year, I want you to know I'm praying for you. That God would bless you. And that God would keep you in his care. That God would honor his name in your life. May it be so today, tomorrow, and in the days to come. Let us pray together. Lord, help us to believe what your word has said. We are incredibly happy if we go through trials with faith and love for you because going through trials with faith in you and your promise and with love for you in our heart will lead <clears throat> to endurance that will lead in turn to an expression of life being celebrated like a crown, like a victor's crown. And I pray tonight that you will prepare us for what is to come and know with assurance that you have prepared what is to come for us. We pray in the words of Hebrews 12, when we are challenged and commanded to run with endurance the race that is set before you. Gracious God, we pray that you will help us do that this coming year. May this church endure well, and may its people endure well. And we pray that you'd be honored in our lives and in our church in 2023. In Jesus' name we pray.